Donald Trump, Sebastian Maniscalco, Howard Stern, Andy Cohen, what do they have in common? I'll tell you what, one New York-based <laughs> comedian has a spot-on impression of all of them, and he's taking the internet by storm. Oh. Hey now, fake Howard Stern. Hey, oh. There's only one guy that has the most mediocre impression of me. He fails like a dog. You know who I'm talking about, right? Who is it? You know, Donald, we could have been great friends. Andy Cohen. What is your least favorite thing about this Andy Cohen impression? What's up, everybody? It's Sebastian Maniscalco, and I'm here with... Stop bothering me. The man behind the many voices, Matt Friend, joining us now in studio. <laughs> it's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you with us. Okay, yeah. we, we are going to talk about all of your career and all the things, but we need to know how you are running into all of these celebrities. Okay. People think I'm a stalker, which is understandable, given the random. frequency. But I was in the elevator on the way here, and Neil Patrick Harris was in the elevator with me. And I said to him, I was like, this is what happens. It's, just an it's aura. living in New York. It's very strange. So this was great, because you run into them randomly, and yeah. then you impersonate them right in front of them randomly. So tell us how that works. What's the reaction you typically get? <laughs> well, you have to like kind of ease into it. So yeah. not just running up to, uh, Andy you know, Cohen. to Andy Cohen like, Andy, you want to plead the fifth? <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> yeah, I love Bravo. <laughs> Incredible. Now you got to ease into it, yeah. you know, like set it up and then you make them feel relaxed. And, then and normally what do they say? Oh, it's spot on or no, I don't really talk like no, that. No, normally all, yeah, all of my interactions have been great. Liev Schreiber actually, sometimes he'll go, sometimes you're doing me a little bit too, too high pitched. Usually I'm a bit lower, okay? So that last time I saw him, I got very deep kind of a Ray Donovan depth. So, so you make take sure the criticism that. and you Yeah, you take the criticism, yeah, yeah, but they're usually all very receptive. So you are 24 years old, yeah. graduated from NYU. Yes. So how does this feel? I mean, you were just blowing up everywhere. The fact that you've had so much success, you graduated from a New York school, you're doing well in New York, it's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's insane. I mean, I, my whole career, I feel like this couldn't really happen in any other city. These different run-ins and kind of the hustle, going to all these different comedy clubs every night. And uh, I love, I mean, this is the best. I, yeah. I love it here. And this desire to perform, where does this come from? We understand it started at a young age, what, four years old? Yeah, I, I, when I watched Austin Powers, that's kind of the movie that got me obsessed with comedy. And I was doing Dr. Evil and Goldmember and all the characters in that movie. And then it kind of just let, led toward me doing impressions of my grandfather and my uncle and, you know, close family members and friends. And now it's just over 250 celebrities. My sister called me a glorified parrot recently. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm bringing I guess I endorsement, am. right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you have a favorite person to impersonate? You know, it's so weird. Like, it really can depend. I, we, I love doing Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. <laughs> Good morning, Cupertino. It's so great to be here today. He just, those events put me in a good mood. And then politically, like, there's just so much to work with. Actors. I was at the Golden Globes two months ago. I did Austin Butler next to him. So it depends on the moment. I'm going to get you down. You know, that's, that's yeah. my next thing. Speaking politically, yeah. Donald Trump is... Donald well, Trump the, is the, what is the question? Well, the question is how... What is the question? <laughs> Ask it to me and look me in the face. The look question, the so, question so is disgusting. how often do you, how often you, you watch so New York One when you're in New York City? What, what, what do I, yeah, what do you watch, you? watch New York One when you're well, here know, in the it's city? A, it's a failing network. <laughs> no one's watching it, but uh, when you watch things, when you're in the city, there's a lot of different things to watch. There's a lot of things. Alvin Braggadocious, he comes out here, he's a lying fraud. And uh, frankly, look at the staff. Look at the staff on their computers. They're so disgusting. The staff. But you got to watch. You got to watch the shows, and you're not going to watch it. You're going to have DeSanctimonious on, and uh, frankly, it's disgusting. No one's watching. But you should watch on Truth Social all the great videos we're putting out. China, Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Stormy Daniels, right? Okay, you gotta get me out of character. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tarp, remove himself. If you, if you heard from Donald Trump about your impressions on him, what would that mean to you? That'd be something, wouldn't it? Oh my God! I mean, that'd be extraordinarily weird. I think. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like, oh, I've always dreamt of getting endorsed as, by Donald as Trump. As soon as he was elected, I was I was dreaming of a ringing. In, no, I mean, it'd yeah. be it would be kind of I don't I don't even know. That'd it's be wild. It's spot on though the way that you do it. How long did that take you to get his facials down? You know. 
The Trump has evolved. All my impressions evolve. I can hear it. You know, there's tape of me years ago doing certain voices, and they definitely have evolved throughout the past few years. The Trump, I'm doing so much now because there's yeah. so much to work with. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's gotten better. I you think. carry around some of your own props. I do. Some I do. Of, I have some, some of these impressions yes, too. Yes, I do. You got we got there. we got right here. We got John Oliver. Okay. <laughs> First of all, it is incredible to be here on New York One. Good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome to Los week tonight <laughs> in your studio. Thank you very much. Oh, I didn't realize you have a bunch of stuff Yeah, we got a bunch here. here. These are, are, this is the one impression, actually, I do to get women to be attracted to me at parties. Oh. Um, because this impression has an effect on women like Elvis shaking his hips in the 50s, Harry Styles <laughs> in Madison Square Garden. Wow. I'm talking about Mitch McConnell. Because <laughs> something about his face just gets women excited. I just, like, look like this. <laughs> And I speak into the camera. Hopefully, I don't have an enormous amount of diarrhea that is coming out. And I'm feeling very good. Don't take this the wrong Scooby way with the glasses. There's a slight resemblance when you do that. What do you mean a slight resemblance? It is extremely identical. Scooby Doo! Can you safely reach for the wig without your. Oh, this? With, you gotta do Howard boy? Stern. Oh, okay. Because we know Howard Stern loves his. Your impression of him. He does. He gave yeah, you a ringing endorsement. Oh, so. ringing. Right. We got it. We got it. Listen, this is the king of all this? media to what is get going that on endorsement. <laughs> okay. Need some help? We got it. Right. So, what are we going to do? What do we got here? Are you going to ask me a question or should I ask you something? Uh, what, what do you think you about this guy? This, uh, this guy right. who does all these impressions. Well, here's yeah, the thing what do you think of Matt Friend? <laughs> right. So, there's this kid, right? Yeah. He, he does an impression of me. And honestly, it kind of messes me up a little bit, mm. right? Because every time he's talking, I hear his voice in my head. Robin, do you agree with this? <laughs> Robin's laughing. That is yeah, funny. right. That is funny. You gonna come to my house? Do a little painting with Jimmy Kimmel or no? We, and uh, John Stamos? <laughs> we are very nervous when we have Howard Stern up here because right. we don't know what he's <laughs> going to say. Let me ask you a question, right? <laughs> As two powerful New York anchors, right? When you talk about interviewing New York celebrities, right? Yeah. What, what, what? Is there a power sense in that? Do you, do you get excited to do that? I mean, I'm gonna say I right. was the most excited to do. This interview, right, right sure you here. Are. Right, thank you. <laughs> I know. Okay. Oh my God, I got to get out of character. Those are spot on. Dude, that thank is you. Quite remarkable. And finally, just talk to us how really your career really is taking off. You've got shows coming up, and yeah. this is something that you hope really will turn into New York Comedy Club. Something. Yeah, I have a bunch. I'm kind of running through a full hour of material. I've been traveling throughout the country, uh, doing stand up at different clubs. I have a big show in Connecticut at New York Comedy Club coming up on the 25th. Very excited for that. Yeah, tickets are on my website and on my Instagram, the Matt Friend. Uh, right there. So, yeah, sure. just a grind, putting in the work in every day, you know? Go As The Rock says, it's about grind, it's about hustle. Is that what he says? Congratulations Something. to all your success and best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.